Welcome back everyone, I'm the Depressed Dior and this is Battlestar Galactica on uh, Tabletop Simulator. Uh, we'll be doing a 4 player game where I'm controlling all the characters and uh, this one will be with no Cylon Leader. Uh, I will probably do another playthrough after this one where I will show off Cylon Leaders. Um, and like I mentioned before, since I'm going to be playing all this by myself, uh, unfortunately hidden uh, roles and stuff like that are all going to be kind of spoiled. Uh, so don't expect too much intrigue or any fancy tricks like that, but I will kind of talk about the gameplay and kind of some ideas and some strategies and things you can do with. Uh, I don't consider myself an expert at the game, uh, and there's a really quite a bit of variety of stuff you have to keep track of. Um, one thing to note about this game is there's a, even without the expansions, uh, there's a lot of information out there, a lot of information on the boards and things like, like that. But what you do as a player turn by turn is actually very simple. Um, so don't get too intimidated. All you have to do is just kind of get used to the motions of the, the cycles of the turns. And as um, eventually you kind of learn what you're supposed to keep track of. Um, like, uh, I'll go ahead and reiterate the objective. Um, it is the base game objective, even though I'm doing all the expansions. So all we have to do, uh, the humans have to do, is get to eight distance or more. And then jump one more time, and that will be a human victory. Uh, humans will lose and Cylons will win if they run out all, if they run, hit zero on certain resources. Uh, fuel is literally they just run out of juice and they, they're just set adrift and can't go anywhere. Um, food is of course they starve to death. Morale is they literally just lose all hope and just break and chaos ensues and they just you know they either give up or kill each other. And population is if you run out of population it pretty much means that you your, your, the, the amount of people are, that are left is not enough to maintain the species. Because you have to have enough people to actually, you know, keep us, uh, the, human, the human species going. Um, now, a few things you want to do for the setup here, uh, which I didn't really talk about in the previous video, uh, is you do start out with three raiders, which are kind of the basic ships that uh, go around. Their main goal is usually to go after civilian ships. Um, they can also... There are generally the things you'll end up dogfighting with uh, your own ship, your own vipers, and things like that. Uh, but yeah, generally their goal, if they're not engaged with someone, uh, is they'll be going straight for the civil civilian ships and blowing them up. And bl and losing your civilian ships uh, is generally bad because you'll lose resources. Um, the other thing raiders will do is they will actually attack the Galactica if they're if they are not engaged and there are no civilian ships on the board. But they can't; their weapons are not particularly strong. You know, shoot enough times, you'll eventually hit something. Anyway, um, so you'll have three raiders and one of these base stars. Base stars are the big, big bases that can um, they can shoot some pretty devastating weapons at the Galactica. They can also release uh, raiders and heavy raiders onto the field. Um, they're generally pretty durable. Um, they actually they're, they're the only ship that can take multiple damage uh, and still stay functional. Um, they have to take a total of three damage to be destroyed, but there's other ways to permanently destroy them as well. And uh, yeah, that's kind of the gist of it. Uh, back here, you're going to shuffle these sh civilian ships here, and then pull those out. Uh, you need to shuffle the Galactica damage here. You need to shuffle the Pegasus damage. Shuffle all the skill cards. The destination cards. The crisis cards. And shuffle the Cylon cards here. Shuffle the Super Crisis up there in the top right corner. Shuffle the Mutiny cards, shuffle the Quorum. Okay, so that should be all the shuffling taken care of. Um, the other thing we need to have is we need two of these Mark IIs already deployed in the bottom sec sections here. Uh, these are your pretty much your main fighters for shooting anything that's out in space. Um, you can actually pilot them if you have any piloting skill. Um, it just, you know, you have to go and do it. Uh, but you can also control them as unmanned vipers, essentially uh, computer controlled or remote controlled. Anyway, uh, with all that said and done, uh, all we really need to do to get things started is I'm going to set up these counters here. I'm going to change one to red. Uh, this red this red marker here is going to represent our current player. Because that's something we actually need to keep track of. And then these ones here are going to represent our once per game abilities, which we'll talk about later. So I'm going to copy this. And then, okay, I'm just going to make four of them because we're going to have four players. Okay. All right, 
So at this point, uh, you would try to find out who the first player is going to be. Um, I'm just going to be going left to right here, so I'm going to have all four players set up on this bottom, uh, along this bottom part of the of the of the board. And essentially, you go in order and pick characters. Now, the limitations for picking characters is you can only pick characters uh, that are from either that are either a support character, which are these characters here, labeled with support, um, or you pick something from the biggest row. Uh, right now, all the rows are the same. Um, so you pick for uh, the first player can pick from anything. Um, pretty much what this means is like if the first player ends up picking like Tom Zarek, who's a political leader, the next player that comes after him that picks a character has to pick one that is from like I mentioned before the the biggest row. And since Tom Zarek has been removed from this row, he it would no longer be tied for the biggest, and so he would only be able to pick either a military leader, a pilot, or a support. So it just kind of ensures that there's a little bit of variety. Um, the other limitation is some of these characters, there are multiples of the same character, but different roles, uh, usually representing like changes to their character throughout the series. Uh, for example, Lee Apollo starts out as pretty much just a pilot, uh, but later on he becomes essentially a, a politician type, uh, type person. I think he might even be, had become president at some point. Um, if someone picks uh, one version of that character, the other version cannot be picked. So if someone decided to pick Lee Apollo Adama uh, as a pilot, um, no one will be able to pick the presidential, uh, the political leader, Lee Adama. Same thing for things like Gaius Baltar. There's two Gaius Baltars. Um, I believe there are multiple Carls. Yeah, there are two Carl uh, Agathons. Um, I don't think there's anything else that's... T oh, there's also two Dom Tom Zarek's. I think that's everything. All right, uh, so with that said, I'm going to go ahead and uh, pick a character. Um, so first character I'm going to go ahead and pick is I'm going to pick, well, let's go with Laura Rosalind. Now something to note uh, about these cards, I, I probably should read some more about them. Um, each of these cards are pretty much set up the same way. Top right corner will tell them what their, what type of character they are, whether it's military leader, politi uh, political leader, pilot, or support. And usually that represents kind of their specialty. Uh, but the other thing it represents is usually um, those positions are top, uh, usually top in the line of succession for certain roles. So political leaders are usually top in, uh, in line of succession for presidency. Uh, military leaders are top of the line for admiral. And pilots are top of the line uh, for CAG. And then supports don't really get a position. Um, it is possible for other role, other of these types to actually get other positions. Positions can change hands. Um, usually it goes by line of succession, but sometimes you, uh, there are certain effects and events that will just forcibly change it to someone else's hand. Um, so that's something to be aware of. Um, one other thing that um, you should keep track of about these cards, uh, for example, we'll use Laura Roslin. Um, the top part usually represents their benefits. Um, one of them is usually a benefit that applies to either a certain action or something they can just do once per turn. Um, and then the second part usually represents a once per game ability, which is what these little tokens are for keeping track of. Once they use that once per game ability, they usually can't get it back. Uh, there's a few exceptions, but they're pretty, pretty rare. Um, and then the last thing that's below that little divider there represents their negative trait. Um, every character has a negative trait, everyone has a positive perk, and everyone has a once per game ab ability. Um, on the portrait, you might notice there's little colored tabs with numbers in them. Um, if you watched the previous video, um, I, you probably noticed there were these colored cards that were skill cards, and they essentially those tabs match those ca those cards. So there's politics, ta uh, leadership, tactics, piloting, engineering, and then there's of course treachery, which is bad stuff usually. Um, so Laura Roslin um, with a three politics and two leadership that represents what card she draws uh, at the start of her turn. Um, so at the start of her turn, she would draw three yellow cards and two green cards, and that generally represents kind of what sort of things that character tends to focus on. Uh, political cards usually have various things that, you know, each of those, each of the colored cards usually focus on certain things. Piloting usually revolves around air, uh, controlling air, being better at controlling aircraft and shooting down stuff. Uh, engineering tends to focus on repairs. Uh, tactics tend to focus on uh, scouting and uh, some 
uh, manipulation of dice in some ways. Uh, leadership usually represents being able to command others with their cards, and then politics is kind of a kind of handles everything else, I guess. I, it's kind of hard to describe what the politics cards tend to be. Um, also, one final thing that uh, each character will have is in the bottom below their negative trait is their setup. Uh, that setup represents where they start at. So Laura Roslin would start out at the president's office. President's office is now. If you're playing the base game, the pres there's a president's office here. Uh, we are playing with the expansions, so the president's office is actually up here. So we'll put her right here and just have her there for now. Um, now I'll talk about her abilities right now. Her special ability is Religious Visions, uh, which allows her whenever she's drawing a crisis card, she draws two and picks one. So that gives her a great deal of control over what crises you can get. Um, if she happens to be a good guy, uh, she would probably pick ones that are very safe and beneficial to the uh, to the cause. And if she happens to be, I don't know, a robot uh, in disguise, she would um, probably pick less good ones. Um, her once per game ability is she can draw up to four quorum cards and immediately resolve one of them and place the rest on the bottom of the deck. And she doesn't actually need to be president to do this. Uh, the thing about quorum cards is that's usually the power that the president has, and she has a once per game ability that kind of bypasses that requirement. Uh, terminal illness is her negative trait, and what this does is anytime she tries to activate a location, uh, she has to discard two skill cards. So for example, she's right now starting in a location known as the president's office. It has an action card on it. Sorry if it's a little blurry. Um, and it states, action, draw two politics skill cards. So if she were to activate this section, before she activates it, she would have to discard two cards and then the effect would activate. So for her, she's not very good at activating locations, uh, which is kind of not great. Especially since the, there's a pretty good presidential location here with the quorum chamber, but she makes up, up for it through other abilities. Anyway, uh, sorry if that was a little long-winded. There's a little, like I mentioned before, there's a lot of information to go through right now. All right, so that's our first character. Um, our second character, uh, second player is gonna pick a character now. Um, she cannot pick, uh, he or she cannot pick up pick up a political leader because one's been picked already. Um, so they either have to pick a support, uh, a military leader, or a pilot. Oh, I guess there's one other thing I need to talk about. Um, piloting. If your character has piloting, um, they can actually go out and physically pilot a Viper or a uh, Assault Raptor. Uh, only people with piloting can actually pilot stuff. So that's just something to be aware of. Um, it's it, There's some benefits in being able to pilot things, especially if you're the CAG. Um, also, one other thing, in the in the case of Lee Apollo Adama, you might notice that there's a leadership slash politics section, and that has a two next to it. Uh, whenever you're drawing your cards, you can actually pick, if you ever have something that's split like that, uh, you can actually pick uh, what colors you want from those. So whenever it hits this turn, he'll draw one tactics, two piloting, and then he can either pick you know two leadership, two politics, or one of each. It's a, his choice, and he can change that every time he draws cards uh, at the start of his turn. All right, so with that all said and done, I can either pick a military leader, pilot, or a, state, a support. Uh, I think I'm gonna go ahead and grab a support. I'm gonna go ahead and grab Chief Galen Tyrell. Uh, his ability is whenever he uses repair cards, he can actually take another action immediately. Um, granted, he can only do it once per turn. Um, which is really good. It makes him really focused on repairing stuff. Um, Blind Devotion is his, is his uh, once per game ability where he can choose a skill type and strength of those, sk of those uh, skills becomes zero. We'll talk more about skill checks in, in the future. And then his negative trait is he can only have uh, eight cards in his hand. Um, most Everyone else has a card limit of 10. His is eight. So there you go. He actually starts in the hangar deck. So we'll put him in the hangar deck. All right, give him his once per game. All right, so he picked a support. Um, the next, uh, the third player can still pick a support. You can actually, if you really want to, you can go for support if you really want to go that way. Um, it can be pretty, usually you want to get at least one of every roll um, because for, for reasons, for one for one thing, if you everyone picked a, a support that you would literally have no pilots, which is a way to play. There's a lot of ways you can play this game. Uh, even if you don't have a pilot, you do have ways to still influence the board. Um, so it's, that's one of the things I really like about the game. Anyway, uh, so we got Laura Roslin. Um, let's get ourselves a pilot. We'll take Boomer here. All right, so Boomer. 
Uh, her, she's a pilot, and she has piloting skills, so she can actually go and fly a Viper. Um, her special ability is at the end of her turn, she can look at the top card of the Crisis deck and then place it either on the top or the bottom. So it's very, it has similarity to, a similarity to the Religious Visions ability. Um, her once per game ability is Mysterious Intuition. Um, she can choose to resolve a skill check on a Crisis card and either automatically pick Pass or Fail. So once again, a lot of these abilities are really good, but they can also be really bad depending on who's, uh, what the intention of the user is. So this person can literally force a fail to happen, or force a pass to happen, and bypass any need to put any cards in. Um, her negative trait is, uh, during the sleeper phase, which is about halfway through the game, uh, she actually draws two loyalty cards instead of one. Uh, what this generally means is that in the second half of the game, uh, she has a higher chance of becoming a, Cy uh, being, uh, a Cylon. Um, that's actually one of the neat things about this game. It's a hidden, uh, hidden role t style game where halfway through the game, your role could change. Um, you could start the first, first half of the game as a human and then realize, oh, I'm actually a Cylon. Uh, it's very thematic with the, uh, the series where certain characters suddenly realize they're a Cylon and then they just start uh, <laughs> killing humans. Uh, it's very, very, uh, very interesting. Um, now, as far as the, the television series is concerned, obviously this game's going to follow whatever lore, it's, it follows its own lore essentially. Like, it's very possible for Laura Roslin to be a Cylon or Chief, and it's possible that Boomer might actually be human this time around. It's just, it really depends on the, the luck of the draw as far as the loyalty cards are concerned. Uh, the other thing that happens in the second half of the game is she gets thrown in the brig, and a lot of times players do not want to pull Boomer out of the brig because they think that she's a Cylon at that point. Because she drew two cards instead of one. Then again, it's quite possible that the, the chance is zero if the Cylons are already in the first phase. It just kind of how depends on how the game goes. Anyway, uh, she st starts out in the armory, which is actually not the best place for a pilot to start, but it's okay. Anyway, uh, for the fourth player, uh, the fourth player only has two choices. They can either pick a support character or they can pick a military leader. Uh, this person has no qualms about using... Uh, be an admiral, so we'll see what we got here. Some of these characters I've actually never really looked at. That's actually a neat little ability. Tom's Eric. Yeah, on my previous attempts to record these, well, I, I'll say I say attempts, but they actually went rather well. I actually did Adama and Kane, but I think I'm going to change things up. All right, Saltai is good at throwing people in jail. Kilo's pretty good at uh, re-rolling dice on his turn. I think I'm going to do Felix. I've never seen Felix in play, ever. Now, actually, what's this guy? You must discard one skill card to use a skill card action. Okay, that's a limit. Hmm. Actually, yeah, I think I'll do the Lewis uh, Hoshi. I've never used him before either, so try that out. Um, his gimmick, his special ability is once per during your, his turn, he can activate, if, if he's activated command, communications, or weapons control, he can discard a skill card to immediately activate it a second time. So, getting extra actions is always awesome. Um, his once per game ability is, if he's not in the brig, he can activate three undamaged locations. They can't be the same place, uh, and it doesn't matter where he is as long he, as he's not in the brig, and it can't be a Cylon location. Um, his negative trait, though, is he has to discard a skill card to use a skill card action. So, alright, and this is going to go all the way with you. And he starts out in communications, which is right here. Okay, uh, that takes care of all of that. Um, so the rest of the characters, uh, your first instinct is probably to delete them. You actually want to keep them around. Um, if you are playing with executions, it is possible for your character to die, in which case you have to pick a new character. So we're just gonna move everyone up here, get them out of the way. All right, uh, final things we need to do. Uh, we need to actually assign, um, we need to get uh, roll cards and we need to get uh, positions. 
So it's going to be quick and easy because there's only four characters here and everyone's a different uh, class, essentially. Uh, political leaders are obviously first, first grabs for presidency. So she's going to become president. Uh, I've already shuffled all the cards, so she gets to start with one quorum card. Uh, quorum cards are essentially presidential things, um, and they're very kind of unique and usually can only be done used by the president, uh, which is kind of neat. Um, all right, so she's got that. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Yeah, a lot of times a lot of them can involve things like, you know, pardoning someone out of the brig or throwing someone immediately into the brig automatically, um, do speeches to restore morale, uh, give some other characters some, like, sub-powers, like, you know, vice presidency and things like that. It's uh, quite a variety. Um, Admiral is going to go, of course, to our military leader. Ooh. Uh, let me turn off hands. There we go. All right, Admiral. Now the Admiral gets the nukes. You start with two nukes. And uh, whoever becomes Admiral or gets Admiral gets the nukes. Uh, so one of the actions he can do on this is he can choose, he can spend his action to fire a nuke. And when he fires a nuke, he can fire into any section of the space, which are these little dividers here. Um, and generally they are designed to destroy base stars. But if you roll high enough, you can also destroy base stars and raiders, or you can destroy everything, including your own ships. Um, very, very powerful. And the, there are ways to get nukes back, but they're pretty hard to get back. Because uh, usually it's because the card itself is literally pretty rare. But the other thing is, uh, usually you're so busy doing other things, you don't exactly always have time to just, you know, you know, take a take an e take an evening off to build a nuke. Um, the other thing that admirals get um, is they get to decide uh, whenever you do a jump, you um, they're the ones that draw the destination card. They'll draw two and they decide where you go. So if a Cylon happens to be your admiral um, and he's still hidden. He could be picking really bad destin like really short destinations or really bad destinations that are eating up resources. Um, so that's some things to be aware of. Same thing for presidents. I mean, if you're if the president happens to be a Cylon, they could use their presidential powers for you know bad things. Um, and then the final position is CAC, which always goes to a pilot. Um, now, if you have multiples of pilots or multiples of like you know pol political leaders or multiples of military leaders, you will have um, there is a there's literally tables that just show the line of succession. Laura Rosalind's the top of the chart on political leaders uh, for a presidency. Uh, top of the chart for Admiral is actually Helena Kane, followed by uh, uh, William Adama. Uh, and then the top for CAG, I think Starbuck is top of CAG? I don't remember, though. But it's one of those things. Anyway, uh, so that takes care of that. We got the positions. Uh, so CAG, uh, the special ability CAG is... Um, you can pass it to somebody else um, to, you know, activate an unmanned viper and you can pass it to somebody else. This is usually a situation where if a non-pilot gets CAG, which happens, uh, this is a way to get CAG back to a pilot. Um, but their primary thing is while you are piloting a viper, um, so that's why you want it on a pilot, um, they can actually activate an unmanned viper, give it commands, and then take another action. So essentially it allows them to get an extra extra command out here in the out in space just makes them a lot better at their job um, now something uh, also the one other thing CAG generally decides um, is if there's a situation where you have to place uh, civilian ships like for example from the Cylon fleet board which we'll talk about later um, they are the ones that decide where the civvy ships go They'll, they have to follow certain rules for it but they get they they have the say on where they appear on the board um, and then for all three of these positions, Admiral, CAG, and Presidency, there are certain crises where it'll say current player chooses, and then there are some that will actually say things that are just like President chooses. So it doesn't matter whose turn it is, uh, the President gets to choose what uh, what option to pick for the uh, for that crises. Same, and then there's ones that say Admiral picks, and then CAG picks, and all that good stuff. Usually, it usually associates with the lore of the of the crises involved. All right, um, sorry if it was a little rambling and long-winded, but there's a lot of stuff to talk about. Um, so with all that said and done, there's a couple more things we need to do. We need to, one, we need to get a lo loyalty deck made. So here's the chart with all the expansions added. Um, we are not including a Cylon leader, so we have four players, and we need to add one card from you are a Cylon deck. So we've already shuffled it, so we'll just put that in here now. 
Next, we need to add seven cards from You Are Not a Cylon. Uh, they're all the same, so you don't need to shuffle them. So there should be eventually eight in here. Now, it also has a little asterisk. Um, down here on the bottom, it says add one additional You Are Not a Cylon card if you are using Exodus. We are using Exodus, so we'll add one more. It also says use an, uh, add an additional one if you're using Gaia, the original version of Gaius Baltar, uh, which we are not. But it also says add one card if you're using Sharon Boomer Valerie, which we are. So we'll add that. So there's 10 now. Uh, it says to add the Mutineer. So we'll add the Mutineer. Uh, we'll talk about the Mutineer when it comes into play. And that should bring us up. Now we should have, uh, it says here you should have nine cards. But since we have those asterisks, uh, we should have a total of 11 cards, which we do. All right. So with that said and done, you just shuffle them. And unless it says otherwise on your character card, uh, you should be drawing one loyalty card each. So we'll do that. All right. So usually you keep these hidden. Uh, there are ways to learn people's loyalty cards, but for the most part, uh, at this point in the game, uh, since I'm playing this by myself, it's just going to be spoiled one way or the other. So Laura Roslin, not a Cylon. Chief, not a Cylon. Boomer. Not a Cylon. Uh, Lewis. A Mutineer. Uh, if you receive this card, immediately reveal it and draw another loyalty card. So he's going to draw another loyalty card. Not a Cylon. So he's a Mutineer. Uh, anytime you receive this card, lose your titles and draw a Mutiny card. So this is the start of the game. Uh, originally, I thought you could only get this on the um, Sleeper phase, but apparently I think you can get it to... Uh, you, from what I can read, read, you can get it in the beginning of the game. All right, so right off the bat, we need to figure out who the actual, the next, uh, the next admiral is supposed to be. Uh, admiral. Okay, so the next admiral on this, uh, Hoshi here is sixth in the line of succession. And the next line would be Boomer. Boomer is now both CAG and the Admiral. Uh, she, Boomer is 13th line of succession. Uh, after him, it would have been Chief. And then at the very bottom of the list is Laura. OK. Uh, let's see. Anytime you receive this card, lose your titles and draw a Mutiny card. So he does get a Mutiny card. Now, Mutiny cards are essentially, they're kind of like Quorum cards, but shady, to say the least. Um, now, the, just because he's a Mutineer, he's not actually bad. It's just his methods involve tend to involve he has to pop, pop Mutiny cards. And most of the time, it's not pretty. Anyway, uh, with all that said, uh, if you ever re reveal yourself as a Cylon, uh, give this to another face-up player of your choice. Um, and now the gimmicks for mutiny cards is having one is okay, but if you draw that second one, uh, you have to discard one of those cards and you immediately go to the brig. Uh, for mutineers, though, they can actually have two cards in your hand, and once you get that third card, then you go to the brig. Also, anytime he a prepared to jump icon is on a uh, when you the mutineer has ever resolved a prepared for jump icon, uh, he has to draw a mutiny card. So one way or the other, there's a good chance he might draw more mutiny cards, and he has to. He'll be forced to use them or be thrown in the brig. All right. So with all that said and done, I apologize if this took a little while, but uh, at this point we are pretty much ready to go. Uh, there's one more thing we need to do. I keep saying that. I'm like, oh yeah, we're ready, and then we're like, oh wait, there's one more thing. So uh, the first player does not do this. Just want to say that right off the bat. The first player is not going to be doing what I'm about to, uh, the other players are about to do. The other players uh, get a starting hand of three cards. Um, those three cards can be any combination of any colors they have access to. So Lewis here could actually start out with three engineering cards if he wants. Or, you know, a combination of leadership and tactics and all that good stuff. Also, do you get sent to the brig? No, he just loses his titles. Okay. All right, uh, so yeah, we need to pick three cards. Uh, title, tactics, tactics. OK, he's actually going to go ahead and start with three tactics. Actually, two tactics, and he's going to go two tactics and one leadership, like so. 
Okay. Uh, Boomer, we'll start out with um, tactics. Uh, she'll do tactics and uh, eh, she'll go piloting. That's fine. I was thinking about grabbing some other cards that she doesn't get as much of, but I mean, engineering is going to be okay. Speaking of engineering, Tyrol is going to go ahead and grab leadership and two engineering. By the way, here's the get a, get another nuke token. Uh, and then uh, Laura Roslin here is going to, well, she doesn't actually, she's going to start with her full hand. That's why she doesn't get to start with the three cards. All right. Uh, I think that's everything. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of organizing on the board off screen. Um, sorry if this took so long, but there was a lot of things to explain. Uh, at this point in the game, everyone is not a Cylon. Now, at this point in the game, no one should know this much information. They shouldn't know, you know, their loyalty cards and th things like that. But for right now, for the first phase, it's going to be all humans all the time. All right. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and call this a video. Uh, when we come back, we will start gameplay. I am the Depressed Dior. This was Battlestar Galactica on Tabletop Simulator. See you guys in a bit.